Hello, welcome back for this formative assessment questions. Now we will go to question number 10. Give three examples of mixtures and tell whether each of one is homogeneous or heterogeneous. Give three examples of compounds. Give three examples of compounds. So here they want everything three. So we will start with mixtures. Uh, one solution, for example, sugar solution, for example, sugar solution. So if you are looking at a sugar solution, it is made, it is a mixture. It is a mixture. But what type of mixture is this? This is homogeneous. It's a homogeneous mixture because you are not able to distinguish between the different composition of this mixture. Another mixture is a mixture of, for example, uh, salt or tea. So you prepare your tea here. In the tea, you add sugar, you add sugar, you add uh, tea leaves, which will give it color. But still, this is a homogeneous mixture because you cannot separate these things by physical means, just like that, easily. The third one here is a vegetable salad. So vegetable salad is a mixture of vegetables. Maybe you have carrots. Maybe you have carrots. You might be having cucumber. Cucumber. You have cucumber. You have uh, another thing here. Maybe you have... Uh, lettuce and so forth. Uh, you might be having cabbage. So all these vegetables mixed together. They are mixed together but you can see them. You will see the carrots. You will be able to see the lettuce. You will be able to see the cucumber and you will be able to see the cabbage and you can even easily separate them. So this type is a heterogeneous mixture. So in a heterogeneous mixture everything is just uh, clear as water and you can easily tell that this is a mixture but sometimes in a homogeneous mixture it is very difficult for you to distinguish them. Then three examples of compounds. So when we are looking at compounds compounds are elements that are chemically combined elements that are chemically combined. And you cannot separate them 
and cannot be separated by physical means. By physical means. This includes, we will we'll take examples here of compounds. We have water, which is H2O, which is made of hydrogen and oxygen combined together. We might have another compound carbon dioxide which is carbon and oxygen combined you could have magnesium oxide and so forth so all these because one they cannot be separated by physical means we call them compounds we call them compounds because they are made of element, different types of elements. If we took uh, other examples here, like H, I mean uh, oxygen molecule, which normally exists in diatoms, this is an element. Even if it has more than one of its kind, it's an element. But once it has a mixture, it's a compound. Compound. So a compound will have more than one element. It may be a molecule or it may be a compound. Let's go to the next question here. And the question here is, describe the difference between a chemical change and a physical change. Give one example for each kind of change. Describe the difference between a chemical change and a physical change. Give one example of each of them. So when we are looking at chemical change, chemical change, so during chemical change, during a chemical change, the chemical, the chemical composition composition of a substance will change will change for example if you burn charcoal burning charcoal which is a carbon which is a carbon you will end up having uh, carbon dioxide and ash and these are different products so this is a, a just an example of a chemical change. Physical change in physical change the chemical composition will not change.
but rather the physical change but rather the physical components example cutting paper into pieces or converting liquid water to solid or gas so if you convert them into solid or gas then this is just but a physical change because if you want this water back you will be able to get this water back the next question the next question reviewing main ideas what is the scientific method what is the scientific method so the scientific method is a logical approach the scientific method is a logical approach it's a logical approach to solving problems so you have to think logically and try to solve problems by observing that is observing collecting data collecting data and formulating hypothesis formulating hypothesis Form formulating hypothesis sorry for this misspelling formulating hypothesis testing hypothesis and formulating theories testing hypothesis and formulating theories so this is what we refer to as the scientific method so the scientific method must be a logical approach which means you observe something by providing proofs and not just by mere imagination let's go to the next question which of the following are quantitative which of the following are quantitative so if you are looking at quantitative a quantitative measure is a non numerical gives a non numerical information gives a non numerical a 
a non-numerical information. So, if something is giving an non-numerical information, then it is uh, it is quantitative. On the other hand, we have quali I mean, uh, this is quantitative gives sorry this is not uh, this is I made a mistake here this is quantitative quantity so quantity is in fact not a non-numerical but numerical it is supposed to be giving numerical information so normally it gives numerical information if it gives a non-numerical it is qualitative non-numerical it is qualitative it will be qualitative so qualitatives is an numerical quantitative is uh, numerical so let's look at the ones which are numerical here the liquid floats on water so when you observe liquid flowing on water that is in fact not quantitative because there is nothing here you will be measuring in terms of numerals so this is out two the metal is malleable so if a metal is malleable then we are basically describing the quality of the metal which means the metal is able to be uh, rolled into wire so this is not a a quantitative the liquid tem uh, has a temperature of 55.6 degrees celsius this is the correct answer because it is qualitative because it is qualitative